CompTIA ITF plus complete training course. Exam Objective 4.2 Given a scenario, use programming organizational techniques and interpret logic. Branching Practice Time to practice your new coding skills with some practice questions. These questions are specially designed to prepare you for the CompTIA ITF plus exam. Each question will contain pseudocode represented in different ways. Remember there are no hard rules on how to write pseudocode, and CompTIA likes to be a bit tricky. Ready, here is question 1. Examine the following pseudocode. If the variable, num, is set to 4, what will be the output? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. In line 1, we have an if statement, so we know this is the first part of a larger branching statement. Your first task is to evaluate if num is greater than 7. Which is a false statement, as num is equal to 4 and 4 is not greater than 7. So we head on down to the next branch statement on line 3. Here we evaluate if num is less than 11. This is true, as num is equal to 4 and 4 is less than 11. So this is the branch we will execute. The only statement in this branch is to print, which means to output, the string, b. So, the answer to this question is b. Now many of you may be looking at line 5. The condition num equals 4 is pretty tempting. Am I right? But don't fall for this. Remember that we start with the first branch and work our way down the code sequentially until we find a branch that evaluates to true. Once we do, that is the path we take. You can only choose one path. In this question, the computer never even considers the third branch containing the num equals 4 conditional statement, as it had already selected the previous branch. Here is question 2. Examine the following pseudocode. What will be the output of this code? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. First off, remember this is pseudocode. Here we just need to follow the logic and consider the pseudocode as a truncated form of spoken language. Okay, for this question, the case on line 2 and end case on line 8 is pseudocode representing the beginning and end of this branching statement. And lines 3 through 7 are our different branches. Knowing this probably makes this question seem a lot easier, doesn't it? Now, in line 1, we have an assignment statement. This statement declares a variable with the identifier score and assigns it the value of 70.00. Line 2, case, opens our list of possible branches. From here we go branch by branch or line by line until we find a conditional statement that evaluates to true. The branch on line 3 evaluates to false, as our score of 70.00 is not greater than 90. The branch on line 4 also evaluates to false, as our score of 70.00 is not greater than 80. The branch on line 5 is where most would make a mistake. In coding we have to be precise. This branch evaluates to false as the score variable may be equal to 70. But it is not greater than 70. In computer programming, that is a huge difference. Now, the branch on line 6 evaluates to true, as our score of 70.00 is greater than 60. So we read on and are instructed to declare and set a variable identified as grade to the string value of D. Now that we have chosen a branch, we move on to the next line of code following the branch statement. This is line 9. Here the code outputs the value of the grade variable, which is currently D. D is our final answer. Here is question 3. Examine the following pseudocode. If today is Sunday, what will be the program's output? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. Okay, so this piece of code is designed to output a business's operating hours based on the day of the week. It does include some containers. But I am confident you can handle this as it is not that much different from the previous two questions. In line 1, we have an assignment statement. This statement declares a variable with the identifier today and assigns it the string value of Sunday. Next we have our containers. Line 2 shows a container with the identifier weekday 1 and stores the string values Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. These values can be used as a set or referenced individually. 
Line 3 shows another container with the identifier weekday 2 and stores the string values Tuesday and Thursday. And line 4 shows yet another container with the identifier weekend and stores the string values Saturday and Sunday. In line 5, we see this question is once again testing us on the concept of branching, and this line is our if branch. Our conditional statement is asking us to check if the value of today is equal to Friday. And here I have an opportunity to teach you something new. We know in coding that an equal sign is used as an assignment operator for many languages. The single equal sign has the job of assigning a value to an identifier. Well, to prevent confusion in a computer program, most languages use a double equal sign as a comparison operator to see if two values are equivalent in value. Now, being that this is just pseudocode, exact syntax is not necessary, so be prepared to see some variance as you attempt these types of questions. Okay, back to the question at hand. The variable today, which is currently set to Sunday, is not equal to Friday, so this statement evaluates to false. This causes us to skip line 6 and move on to the else if branch on line 7. Here our conditional statement is checking if the value of today, which is currently set to Sunday, exists in the container, weekend. Well, weekend contains the values Saturday and Sunday. So yes, Sunday is in the container weekend, and our statement will evaluate to true. Now we will execute this branch, which includes the indented statement on line 8. Line 8 calls for the program to output the hours of 10 to 4 and that is our answer. If you found these example questions helpful, please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will begin our study of loops. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.